This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, and I'm here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. How you like that? That sounds fun. That's fun. Yeah. And, I, and I have an eight-sided hat that I get to wear once. I don't think there's ever an opportunity to wear that again, but uh-huh. we'll see. So uh, today you wanted to talk about the universe works really fast, except when it works really slow. Yes. And what's up with that? Okay. So most people have a story about how it's slow and I'm going to give you one about it's fast, but I would like you to help me understand why it is so incredibly slow sometimes. Okay, so a couple of days ago, this is now Thursday, so I would say sometime over the weekend, I heard spirit speak to me as I am accustomed to hearing spirit speak as clearly as I hear your voice. Get your car inspected. And I, if that was something that, By the that way, I, that sounds like scripture. What? <laughs> I never heard any or read anything like that in scripture where spirit said, get your car inspected. Oh, it's very practical. But yeah, well, anyway. you know, that's the kind of cool relationship we have, right? Yeah. It's that same yes. divine voice that says with whom I am well pleased and get your car inspected. That's cool. I got to go back and see if, <laughs> if the voice said, well, please. <laughs> but so I didn't really rush to do it because I don't. You know, I'm still a Zoomer, right? I'm not going out a whole heck of a lot. So I kind of forget sometimes. But anyway, uh, I was driving. And to be honest, I was not driving on my way to get the car inspected. And a policeman pulled me over. And I, I didn't sweat it because I knew that all of my credentials were in order, except that sticker on the front. I'm thinking, like, how did he see that? Well, maybe something else. So anyway, I asked him what it was. And he said, you know, your your inspection sticker is out of date. I said, like, how did you see this, you know, color? And we went back and forth. And so uh, he said, at the end of all of it, he did not give me a ticket, but he said, um, promise me that you'll get it done. Like, what policeman says, promise me? And so <laughs> I said, okay. And he bent down and he said, really, promise me you will get this done. And I was like, how could you not say yes, you know, to this policeman who could have given me one of those, what did you call it? Um, It's not a real ticket, but. A warning. Right. He didn't even give me the warning. He just asked for a promise. And I was, um, I was just really taken by that. You know, like I didn't drive away right away because I realized who that was, you know, that was spirit saying, I told you to get this done. Now, will you promise, <laughs> will you promise me that you will do it? So that was fairly immediate. And that is not an unusual kind of thing for me. I can, you know, it's not always bad stuff or naughty stuff. I mean, it could be nice. But then on the other hand, there are some other times when I have asked and it's been pretty slow or when it came, it came differently, not necessarily in any way that I had expected mm-hmm. or enjoyed receiving. <laughs> <laughs> That's the magic of change, is that we know what we're changing from, and we have an idea of what we want to change to, but we don't have any experience with that new experience of what it's changing to. And there's some detail that comes along with it that can be surprising or distressing or uncomfortable. So how do you do that? How do you just take this situation that I told you about that didn't feel good telling you and just like wrap it up 
in, well, this is all there is, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a new experience and you don't know how to live in the new experience. And so I'm like, okay, do we still have a conversation here? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and that same process, the creative process is repeating itself over and over and over again. Um, I, this, your, your story is great. It's, it reminds me of one of our favorite jokes about the voice of spirit because spirit told you on Sunday over the weekend, get this done. And you didn't pay attention to spirit, even though your background has convinced you that paying attention to that still small voice, when spirit says something, you probably ought to do it. So then spirit sent a cop, a, a polite cop who asked you for a promise, which was very unlikely. And spirit will be perfectly happy to continue escalating until you get the darn car inspected. And the part that you probably would not want to get to is if there is an accident or an incident or something, and it turns out that the fact that your car wasn't inspected disqualifies you from getting something good to happen or causes something bad to happen. Spirit is perfectly willing to do all of that. And you have the opportunity to engage in this at whatever level you want. Now, if you wanted to stay in your ego and spirit says, get your car inspected, he says, I'm not going to get my car inspected. I don't need to do that. Then you could get into a fight with spirit. Now, who's going to win? Well, I'm not going to win. That hasn't been my experience. We are talking about an infinite creative power that has created everything and can create anything. The thought that we are going to muscle our way through and have our way in spite of that infinite creative power is pretty arrogant and pretty wrongheaded. So it's probably a good idea to be, especially if you're aware of the guidance, to take it, to follow it, and to let whatever is unfolding unfold next. Because that guidance will show up again. The reason for it will eventually become obvious. And you may find out why it was that Spirit told you to get your car inspected last weekend. Or you might not, because the thing that could have happened is, will be so far away from you that you won't even notice it. It won't be within your sphere of awareness. And that's fine. We don't need to know why. We don't need to know all of the various details and reasons why. There are times when I'm driving someplace and I usually go this way. And for some reason, I decide to go the other way. And I don't know what it is. It's just, I got an idea. I'm going to go that way. So I just follow that. That's, that's an intuitive nudge for me. And then it turns out later there was a huge backup or a huge accident or a flood or whatever it is on my usual route, which I might see when I'm on my way home an hour or two later and realize, oh, that's why I didn't go down that way. I would have either been stuck or in the accident or trapped or inconvenienced or whatever. Sometimes I don't know what those things were. I don't know if I got on this entrance of the expressway instead of that entrance of the expressway, that there's some maniac driving way too fast and changing lanes that would have gotten into a wreck with me. I don't know. And the fact that I followed the guidance means that that particular circumstance didn't eventuate, didn't happen. And I'm taken care of and I'm ignorant and that's okay. Hmm. That's okay. It, it feels, um, the after feeling of that experience. And I don't know if, if, if anybody thinks it's a small experience. It, it's big to me because I know the voice and I also know when I'm ignoring it <laughs> and I'm going to get to it because it might not feel like a big deal at the time. But then to hear you say, you know, this is the universe and who's going to win here. It's like, you know, why did you even bother not doing it? You know, I could have done it Monday and rather than procrastinate and on Wednesday get pulled over. And there was grace. I call that grace. You know, the, the policeman didn't have to be that way. But I look back on it and feel like, you know, you are far too along in your spiritual life to ignore the voice for two days. That's what are you doing? You know, like, <laughs> like, you know, you, you're that busy that you could ignore that voice. And I never thought of the escalation of, of the situation, you know, ignoring it 
and what might have happened, an accident and all that business. Yeah. Think about that. You know, I got, got other things on my mind right now. But I suppose when spirit speaks, there should be nothing else on your mind. It should trump everything. Uh, I, there's, <laughs> that seems like good uh, advice to give ourselves. And so just brainstorming, what could be the possible reasons that you got this prompt from spirit and then ignored it and had the second encounter could be that it's something great for you could be that this regrounds you in your awareness that when the infinite speaks to you it's it's time to drop everything else and go with it it could be that you're going to be hearing stories or you have been hearing stories from other people who are getting that prompt where you think that something has been made very clear to them of what their next step is and they're ignoring it and it'll give you some sensitivity that if they're doing that instead of just being judgmental on what's the matter with you to realize you did that too and that puts you in a place where you can be more aligned and understanding and empathetic with somebody else who's resisting that guidance take your pick it's a multiple choice well, it, you have no idea how powerful the words are that you're saying, because uh, there are some things I know uh, about what's up ahead, but I also have a lot of changing to do. And maybe it's giving up my control freak card, which we laugh about, <clears throat> but giving that up is, is a biggie, mm -hmm. you know, and I've, and I've, I'm quite proud that I've been doing really, really well with that. <laughs> I really am. However, that's just one thing, you know, and, and I can, you know, I bet a lot of people out there are, we're all multitasking ridiculously and trying to do everything. And then coming down from the pandemic, which is not yet over, still trying to figure out how to get back to normal life or what is normal for life or work in my, in my case, and what needs to be not picked up, you know, those kinds of things consume me, consume my thoughts so much that I think when spirit speaks, I'm like, what, that's not as important. Getting this car inspected is cool. Okay, I'll get that. But what I'm really concerned about, and I'm waiting to hear from you on this, what are you talking to me about this car for? You know, like I don't even drive. I go to Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> I got this over here that's important. But then, you know, you said that spirit is like, this the universe. Who am I to know what's important? Right. Right. A couple of observations come to mind as you describe where, where your path. And the first one is that this podcast, the, the whole series, will be a fabulous chronicle of you and your transformation from card-carrying control freak to wherever it is <laughs> that you're winding up. Because you were gripping that card really hard when we started this series 30 really? episodes ago. Oh, yeah. Really? You were. And, and all along, you know, I, I could... I could argue with you and tell you why being a control freak or being proud of being, being, being a control freak is not helpful. But I didn't because you'll figure it out. And somebody who's that attached to being a control freak is not going to let go. And through the course of this, there have been changes and softening and a different perspective that you come to. Uh, and I tell you what, we're going to take a break. And then we're going to come back and talk about why the universe works really slowly. That would be great. I can't wait. You can put practical prayer to work in your life, and Reverend Bill Marcioni can help. He is offering an online class that teaches you to create your own practical prayer in five weekly one-hour sessions. The final hour brings your practical prayer together, anchored in live original music by a notable New Thought musician. Practical prayer is based on the most effective prayers found in religions and spiritual practices all over the world. Use it to deepen ever more fully into the truth of your spiritual nature. It's the core of a transformational spiritual practice that's simple, even if it's not always easy. 
Reverend Bill is also available for private spiritual counseling prayer sessions. Together, you'll lean into the challenges you've experienced in life and explore the transformation that's possible through practical prayer. You'll uncover old, hidden beliefs and uproot them to make way for the life of your dreams. Everything you need to know is on the website at b-v-light.com. That's b-v-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're going to continue this conversation on the speed at which spirit moves. Because sometimes spirit moves really quickly. And sometimes it seems like spirit moves really slowly. So what the heck is the matter with spirit? And there's actually nothing the matter with spirit. It's the personal transformation that we're involved in. You're talking about you need to get your car inspected or you didn't think you need to get your car inspected because you only go to the Wawa and there's really, there's no pressure. And spirit said, no, get your car inspected. And it is possible that in one of the myriad scenarios playing out, there would have been an emergency. You had to drive someplace an hour or two away, in which case having your car need to be inspected in order for that to happen would have been more than you needed. Yeah. So now that doesn't need to happen. You've responded, you've stepped up, you've said you're doing your part, and maybe that's not required at this point, as long as you get your car inspected. Today, like, by the like way. You, like you promised the nice policeman. <laughs> 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 and sometimes the universe works really slowly, and I think that's because we're not ready for the experience of whatever transformation we're seeking. Sometimes things happen really fast and it's awesome. It's love at first sight, you know, mm -hmm. instantaneous transformation. And there are other things that just seem like they, they take forever. You, you were having your description of the confetti, this, this confetti falling down upon you and having it all be uh, poop. <laughs> 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 and then having a fear, what is this and why is this all coming at once? And what am I doing? And the fact of the matter is, you know, when, when we're surrounded in a field of poop, it's really easy to say this is bad. However, when we realize that our physical experience is in life itself, it's about breathing in and breathing out. It's about uh, eating and assimilating and eliminating, you know, whatever our nourishment is. If there's going to be a bunch of poop, it should be outside. <laughs> You know, we only need to be full of a certain amount of it because it's a flow and it's a process. And yes, I have been at various times in my life, completely full of it. And people have told me that, but let's not get off on different, on a different metaphors. We want things to be unfolding at their speed, at the pace, which is that divine perfectness. If you, you've seen the fireworks, 4th of July, you know, you go and there's a lovely firework show and they light the fuse and suddenly, boom, the sky is filled with this wonderful bright color and light and the noise and the rest of it. If you think of planting, I'm going to use corn as the same metaphor. What happens is the grower puts the seed in the ground and tends to it. And then what happens is gradually over time, the corn shoots up and it carries the the yellow ears and the green stalks, and it brings that bounty. Now that's the same sort of ooh ah as the fireworks is just on a much slower scale. Hmm. Isn't it lucky that the farmer doesn't have to worry about getting out of the way before the corn comes up? <laughs> <laughs> If you plant the seed and within one, 1,000, two, 1,000, and this seven, seven foot stalk of corn is going to be coming out of the ground, people could get hurt. <laughs> people could be seriously injured by the corn coming up too fast mm -hmm. or the bamboo growing even more quickly than it does. So there is an unfolding. There's a process to what's going on. And being in alignment feeling ourselves to be in the flow isn't when things go quickly or slowly. 
it's when we are in the groove with the pace at which they're happening and we're not trying to rush it and we're not trying to delay it and we're we're doing that dance with the infinite to allow our experience to come together Mm -hmm. i see that yeah i see that i suppose i have to look at it from the beginning step one where the seed was planted because the barrage of crap that (laughs) just (laughs) Just, you know, I skipped over. I feel I feel really good about this, you know, in terms of where I came from and where I am now. I didn't think not one time this is what I deserve and none of that crap is mm-hmm. none of that. So I was cool with that. But I did think, well, obvious, the most obvious thing that is going on here is that I need to pause and look at some things and see. And, and I was nervous the pause was something that resonates with me real well, because I always say, if you're in a confusing situation, just shut down and stop and not blah, blah, blah. And and often I will pull over to the side of the road even to just reconnect and start again. So that whole thing was okay. But what I had to look at and the possible changes that might be necessary that was what was freaking me out, you know, and, and maybe it's not, you know, maybe I'm just like getting ahead of things and saying, oh, my God, is this am I on pause because this is bad? This is bad. This is bad. No, I don't even know that. Right. I don't even know. So yeah. I have to just accept the pause and know that <laughs> the universe has got my back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that, that everything is working out for my good. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. There's actually a lot more detail to the process of growing corn than dropping the seed on the ground and then harvesting the corn. There's some more stuff that goes on. There is, uh, tilling the soil, softening it up. There's pulling the weeds, there's fertilizer, there's watering. There's a process. There's mm-hmm. things that go on while somebody is growing corn. And the farmers who have been growing corn for a while understand what the process is. They understand when they need to get the seeds, when they need to do the tilling, when the fertilizer goes on. And so they've got that all dialed in. If we're coming along and we're impatient because what we really want to do is have a nice ear of corn on the cob. And we just go in the middle of February and throw the seeds onto the frozen ground because that we're, we want it to happen now. I was like, no, there's a process. <laughs> The process is going on and you get to wait because Uh, you get to be in the flow. By the way, don't till the soil after the corn starts to grow because that will do bad things. Well, it won't do bad things for the corn. It will not allow it to continue to be the corn that you were looking for. mm -hmm. So it's everything in its place, everything in its time. And it's the alignment that we have is understanding what's ours to do next or what's ours to do now and then doing that and then getting out of the way and letting the process happen. Interesting. And as you were saying that, I was thinking, I'm following along and thinking, now, what were your thoughts during this this time at this point? You you understand you're resonating with, with what he's saying. And here's what I heard myself say. What I'm looking at ain't that big a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Like, come on, you know, it's like, I'm not trying to do a mega new thought center, mega church thing. Come on, this ain't that big, but then it might be. It might be. And is getting a new thought, mega church established with, you know, 10,000 people who are participating on a weekly basis, bigger than the transformation in one person's consciousness as they come into a, an absolute understanding of the divinity that they are claiming their power and their oneness with the infinite. Hmm. I, I suppose that it depends on where you stand and what you're, you know, you're doing. If your vision is to have a, a huge mega situation, I don't know. I, I, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I really do. If you don't do the individual transformation, if you say that's not a big deal, that's not important, there's no way to do the bigger one 
because what the 10,000 person megachurch is, it's, it's that one transformation run through a photocopier 10,000 times. So one is a repeat of the other. They're both big. Mm. They're both big. Yeah, well, you did it like you usually do. <laughs> <laughs> Sage. <laughs> Sometimes okay. I just congratulate myself for not saying something completely stupid. I've uh, not heard you see, do that yet. But it just, it makes total sense. It really does. And yeah, it does. Thanks. Well, let's take a break and come back and we'll do a prayer. And I think the prayer this time will be about being in partnership with spirit. Get inspiration in an instant. God calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just five ninety five a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now at GodCall.org. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're going to do a prayer, and this is about being in partnership with spirit or That's the good, infinite cause, cause or the I divine or God, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you call is fine. I need the prayer, okay? I think I <laughs> <laughs> Well, you don't need the prayer, but you certainly will benefit from the prayer. Yeah. And I think it turns out that when you'll benefit from the prayer, then the other people who are listening will also benefit from the prayer. Mm -hmm. And this is just the reminder that the infinite creative power that is creating our lives is working in partnership with us. That's what we talk about in the first step of a practical prayer is we identify that infinite power that creates everything. And it creates it as an expression of love, sharing itself as its creation. It is infinite energy. So there's power there and it is harmony and it is balance. And there are a couple dozen different aspects that we think of as being distinct of how the infinite is expressing itself or sharing itself. In the second step of a practical prayer, we are aligning ourselves with that power because everything started with the one and spirit has been sharing itself, its energy, its substance, its intelligence, everything as its creation. Everything is that divine presence in its own particular form. And because that's what everything is, that's what we are. So the person doing the prayer and the person being prayed for are spirit made manifest, spirit taking form. And that means that when we're doing a prayer, it is God praying to God in God. So there's, there's no inside or outside. There's no separation there. And that's where the idea of the partnership comes from. Because spirit can do no more for us than spirit can do through us. If I'm going to be guided by the hand of God, the chances are very good that it's the hand that's on the end of my arm, or it's the hand on the end of the arm of somebody who is close by. It could be somebody grabbing my shoulder as I'm about to step into traffic. It could be in the form of the police officer handing the citation or the warning or my credentials back or not. It shows up in all sorts of different ways, but it is a partnership. And the prayer here is about being in that partnership, doing our part and listening for the guidance as to what our next part is going to be. 
and then letting go so that spirit can do its part. And it's a dance. So if there's a particular area that anybody who's listening is looking to have a transformation in their life, bring it to mind. Bring it to mind because we're going to focus on the partnership with the infinite. And whatever that circumstance is, bring to mind that aspect of God, the highest divine expression of whatever it is that you're inviting. Because that infinite creative power that is everything, that is everywhere, that is everyone, is all of that good. It is abundance. It is love. It is harmony. It is balance. It is wholeness. It is peace. That infinite creative power that creates everything is all of this. And it shares itself as everything in creation, as everything that exists, expressing all of that good in different ways. Each of these expressions of that divine goodness are distinct and particularized. That includes me. That includes everyone who's listening to this prayer. We are each individualized expression of that infinite creative power. We are part of that one mind. We are thinking with that one mind. We are using that same creative law to intentionally create the next experience in our lives. That infinite mind is my mind. It is the mind of each of us. So I know that each of us is guided by the highest and best ideas that are available in that infinite mind. When we open ourselves to divine guidance, we are directed to what is our next perfect step. And this is not God's plan for me. This is for me having gotten myself to this particular circumstance or situation and having an idea of what I want to be creating next in my life. This is the divine telling me what my next perfect step is. And spirit speaks in all sorts of different ways. In words, very clear, or in ideas, or in patterns or colors, or in signs. Spirit speaks in so many, many different ways. And as we open ourselves up to that divine guidance, Spirit speaks. And our next opportunity is to take the step that we have been guided to take. To be in that partnership of being active in creating that next new experience for ourselves. I'm doing what's mine to do. Each of us is doing what's ours to do. And we're taking that next step. And continuing to be open to divine guidance. Because once we've taken that next step, we're in a different place. And perhaps the guidance is going to be adjusted Now that we're here, there's something else. There's something new to be done. And continuing in that process, allowing spirit to guide us and maintaining our commitment, keeping our promise to continue stepping forward. We're in partnership with the infinite, allowing good and more good and more good to flow into our lives. And for this, I'm grateful. For the good that's showing up in our lives, for the awareness of the process, for that complete willingness of spirit to partner with us and for our complete willingness to partner with spirit. I'm grateful for all of this good. I'm grateful for our awareness of this creative law. And I'm grateful to know that that law is already responding. This good is already underway for each of us and for all of us. So the feeling of thanks, I release this word into that creative law. And I know without any question whatsoever, it's already saying yes, this good is already underway. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of Be the Light.com. Be dash the dash light. where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org.
This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.